this is the last set of boards that I need to prepare and this is the one and a half by 13 sixteenths of an inch boards so you know about a one by by two and I will go ahead and router the very edge of this and this just adds that little extra bit of detail it is an optional step but I feel like it makes a big difference the first step in the construction is to connect your pegboard to those two by twos. And I'm gonna do that with one and a half inch screws. And then I'll repeat that on the other side. Now, you want to make it so that it's 24 inches across from one two by two to the other two by two. Even if there's a little gap there, it's okay because the trim will cover it. Generally speaking, I'd say this is the trickiest part is trying to get those sides to hold still while you put the other two sides on, particularly this third side is difficult. But all I do is I just kind of try to prop it up. In this case, I used the uh, routing table. And again, you just measure, make sure it's your 24 inches all around and connect it. Now we put the top and the bottom on, which is just that plywood, the half inch. And what I like to do is just go around to each side and make sure that it's completely square, that it's the same distance, and then you just screw right into those two by twos. Now I'm gonna trim out that pegboard. For the long sides, the ones that'll go vertical, those should be cut directly to what it needs because it's just that 48 inches. But the ones that go in between those at the top and bottom, you're gonna have to cut those exactly for where yours are at. Now on two of the sides, you'll just do it flush with the side and then on the other two, you'll have it overlap. I'll kind of show you how when we get to that point. Moving on to that crown molding kind of look, this is the part where it's really detail oriented and it becomes important to do it just right and pay that attention to detail. I usually start by putting my 45 degree angle on my routed board. Then take that inside corner and put it right at the corner of my piece. And then I mark the other side with the one piece in place. I don't nail anything on yet, not until I have all four pieces cut. I usually take the pencil mark and add it to the top edge of the piece so that I can see it. Now it's time to cut that other corner and make sure that you're still going that same direction because you want the thicker side to be right against your box. I just continue around doing that to all four sides of the top and then I flip it and do it to all four sides of the bottom and then it's time to move on to the next piece. Now we'll take our little squared off pieces and do that exact same process but on top of the last piece that we did. The last step is to apply the little trim pieces that go just around the border of that plywood because I don't like the layers to be exposed. I feel like they're more exposed to the elements and just not quite as pretty. I mean, even when you put paint on them, I feel like it's better like this. So two sides should be exactly the 29 inches that you cut and then the other two sides it should overlap the two that you put on. I'm planning on painting this piece white when I'm all done and then distressing it down with sandpaper. But because the wood is kind of a light color, that distressing won't show up very well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a layer of the dark gray chalk paint and I'll just do that around the areas that I know that I'm going to do some of the distressing. And so that'll be just any of my, my corners, edges. Generally speaking, I'll do a couple of spots on the top just so that I have um, a couple of areas up there that I can wear down. Now that the dark gray paint has all dried, I'll put on the white chalk paint. And for this one, you usually need two coats. For my pegboard, since it's already white, that portion will only need one coat. But I do highly recommend that you paint with a nail or something similar close by because if the paint happens to go over and block one of those holes, you'll need to take that nail and just kind of poke right through it so that, so that it doesn't dry that way. Now that the paint has dried, it is time to sand down the edges so that it's a little bit rounded and you can see the wood and some of that gray paint through the white. 
This distressing helps bring out the three-dimensional qualities so that you can see all of that detail work that you were doing. Now that the paint has all dried and I've blown it off with the air compressor, it's time for me to put the finishing wax on. I really like using this finishing wax, but it is a little bit different to use. You just want to have a nice thin layer over the whole thing. You can feel it kind of slide when you when you touch it. It does take a little bit longer to dry. It takes about 24 hours to, to really dry to the touch. This is the last step, just sealing it and getting it all ready for use up at the fair.